Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Kay, and I am here today to <laughs> talk about Friday Night Lights. Let me tell y'all something. Hollywood need to go ahead and pay them people because it's the fall now. We are moving into autumn and we don't have any lineups for autumn TV. That means cable is about to be running mad reruns. Okay, and we probably won't be getting all, and you know it already takes streaming a long time to put the shows out anyway. So, whew, Lord Jesus, I don't even want to talk about it because I'm just going to get upset. <laughs> but how I arrived at Friday Night Lights is, let me tell y'all something. Friday Nights came out in 2006, and it was over five seasons. And since we're on top of the writer's strike, the writer's strike is what ended Friday Night Lights the first time. So I need for Hollywood to get together because this is becoming a cycle. Y'all need to stop. But anyway, I don't know how I missed Friday Night Lights because it, I was, how old was I in 2006? I was 14. So this was prime time teenage drama for me. And I just, what was I, girl? My TV at 14 stayed between Disney Channel because I was watching Raven and Sister Sister and Kim Possible and Liz McGuire and even Stevens. That's probably why I ain't know nothing about Friday Night Like. My TV ain't leave this channel, Nickelodeon, and Cartoon Network. So, and around 2006, I believe the game was coming out. So, I was watching the game, too. Ooh. And I don't know what year um, American Secret Life came out. But Secret Life had me by the neck, okay? Let me stay on topic and finish telling y'all what I'm saying. So, how I arrived at Friday Night Lights is, clearly, I am biased to sports dramas. <laughs> I, at this point, like, I used to watch all them shows, like, I used to be into, like, sitcoms and dramas and stuff when I was younger. But, as an older adult, I don't watch many series like that. Um, I used to, and then after the series kind of went out, I was heavy into reality TV, but I haven't watched reality TV like that for real, for real in over five years. So, um, I was just into like, I had got, I had gotten into dating shows. And so that's pretty much all I was watching dating shows. Oh, and I was watching Marvel stuff because, you know, Disney had all that Marvel stuff. So I was heavy in my superhero bag over the last couple of years, especially during the pandemic. I was in my superhero bag. I still am, but, you know, superhero stories are kind of going through a time right now. So I don't focus back on series. And so right now, um, currently I was watching Grownish. Um, I was watching Black AF. I was watching, um, Blackish. I was watching Modern Family, Big Bang, and um, I was watching a little bit of Call Me Cat, uh, and then I had started watching the game on Paramount Plus. And so, um, as of recent, I have been heavy into sports dramas, and so I realized that majority of the time when I watch TV, if it's not sports related, I don't really watch it so i ended up at swagger and so then i found out that the writers of swagger or some of the writers of swagger had partaken in friday night lights and so i was just like if friday night lights and then i was watching um erica shout out to erica vane i was watching erica vane live one day and she was talking about all this stuff that um because she was doing all american talk and she was like um people was like all american ain't got nothing on friday night lights and i was like i don't heard about friday night lights friday night lights friday night lights I need to see if that's on a streaming platform. So finally, I got to Friday Night Lights. I think currently Friday Night Lights is on Hulu if you have a subscription and it's on Peacock. So right now I'm watching um, Friday Night Lights on Hulu and I can see why Friday Night Lights had that generation by the throat. <laughs> if you see me keep... Sorry, y'all. I'm playing with my hair and I keep pulling hair out of here. But anyway... Friday Night Lights Season 1. I'm just here to talk about Season 1. I just started Season 2, like, legit, but I'm here to talk about Season 1. Season 1 had 22 episodes. So, this was back in the day when shows was giving um, content. Right now, shows only giving us 10 because 
The network's done got a little lazy. But, um, Primetime TV was giving you 22 episodes a season. No doubt about it. Um, honestly, I ain't gonna hold you. Probably the first five episodes of Friday Night Lights. I'm sitting here looking at my screen. I got the um, episodes pull up. The first five episodes of Friday Night Lights was kind of slow for me. Like, I'm not even going to hold you. Like, I had to rewatch the pilot twice because I fell asleep first time. But once I got past them five episodes, because, you know, it's building. Woo! Friday Night Lights got nasty. Let me tell you something. Friday Night Lights was good. Okay? Like, it. They, let me just talk to y'all about the range season one had season one talked about race season one talked about um essay season one talked about um substance abuse and still is season one talked about um athletes and how they are treated especially um child athletes it talked about um dementia and still is it talked about um aspects of being a, a child whose parents in the military it talked about um black issues it talked about um engaging in your first time it talked about um having it, it it went down the road of navigating a life with disabilities um it talked about you know what if a parent or a child has no parents in their life and you know the the brother or the sibling is raising them Child, it done delved into um adult and teenage entanglements. Um, what else? Child, Friday Night Lights tackled a whole lot. Oh, it tackles chasing your dreams. You know, it it was a lot. Um, yeah. For Dylan to be a small town in Texas, they had a lot going on. And it was in the show is giving very much small town vibes. Like, I ain't gonna hold you. I wasn't I'm not here for Buddy Garrity at this point, at this current present time. Oh yeah, it talked about marriage and infidelity as well. And it talked about the Lord. I'm not here for Buddy Garrity at this current present time. Um, Coach Taylor, I had to grow on to. If I had to pick a favorite character right now, my favorite character is Matt Saracen. Um, I just think Matt is so sweet. Matt is so sweet. He stuttered. He just so nice. And he's very soft-spoken. But you know, them kind of people, you got to rile them up. He'll stay cool and he'll stay calm. But don't push him. Because he'll unleash the beast. I just like the dynamic of the team. And the, and the reason why I got hooked on the Friday Night Lights. Because it was that same quality that I fell in love with Swagger. It's that team bond in the, in, in the, in the way the coach played the role in the student athletes' lives. He knew that it was just bigger than football. He knew that he was shaping men. And them them the kind of shows right there that'll tug at your heartstrings. Because, you know, some coaches, and not to delve too much into season two, but you got some coaches who are just there to be the coach. They don't care nothing about the players because they had a coach that they ended up or still is trying to get rid of in season two. Um, that they fired because um, Riggins ended up passing out because the coach was just overly hard on him. Um, I, I like, you know, I like the relationship Coach Taylor have with his wife because she a roller, but she don't be playing with him. 
She do not be playing with him. Like she let him know and she and she speaks up. Now there is sometimes where she don't necessarily say everything. She kind of just fall back because she know like when you are married to a coach, and I feel like Tanya had these same qualities and swagger. Um, when it came down to the kids, like she do anything for them kids. I can't remember her name, but it's Miss Miss Coach Taylor. <laughs> Ugh. Now they daughter, I was ready to run them one time with her, but you know she a teenager and she, you know teenagers, we have to go through that stage sometimes. Be a little rebellious, um, you know, some things I do understand now that I'm, you know, thirty. I understand a little differently now, but at you know fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. You think that, you know, everything at that time is, that everything is the end of the world. <laughs> everything at that time is the end of the world. Like, if I don't talk to this boy right now, my life is shattered. <laughs> everything is the end of the world. So, but, um, you know, one person that I grew to have more, one character that I grew to have grace for was oh it was two two characters that i grew to have grace for was tyra and tim tyra and tim began to show off together as a couple they but they were completely toxic they were they did not need to be together and i was glad they broke up when they did because it was it was it was twisted but um tim struggles because he does not have that parental love. He doesn't have that feeling of security. He doesn't have that feeling that somebody cares for him. Even though his brother is there and his brother, you know, have been there with him for the most part. But there are times where his brother got a little shysty. And that may, be, have, that may have been because Tim was harder to deal with. But um, his brother was still, you know, young and trying to figure his life out as well. And so it was a lot to take on the responsibility of keeping a teenager and making sure that everything goes well with them. And then, you know, Tim was drinking. Like, I don't know no teenage. I, I mean, I, I didn't grow up in that kind of environment where or went to school where kids was drinking like that that's so young but um and there could be things that i don't know about but tim was tim was giving carlton <laughs> from parallel tim was throwing them back okay like and him going to practice and playing games with hangovers is crazy i'm surprised he didn't knock himself out oh i forgot Friday Night Lights also dealt with mental health a lot. And I like the way they handled the issues. They was very um, ahead of the game when it came to a lot of stuff. Very ahead of the game. Um, what else? I'm trying not to summarize, but I'm just trying to say things that stuck out to me. And I don't want to make the video drastically long. But um, the the situation. Now let me tell y'all something. Typically, when it comes to series and episodes that deal with race, for some reason, I'm a I'm I'm a history person. I love watching historical documentaries and stuff like that. And I can watch you know educational things on race, and it will not upset me. But time it is depicted on screen and it is acted out, I'm upset. <laughs> I'm upset. I just don't. I don't like watching stuff like that. And in the way they went to that school, first of all, that coach. It was the fact that the coach said something insensitive, and I don't know if he necessarily. Okay, it's Texas. <laughs> sorry, people from Texas. I'm so sorry, people from Texas. What he said was it racial? Yes. Was his intent at the time to be racist? Probably not. But at the same time, it came off completely insensitive. 
And then it's like Smash. Smash was one of them people where he knew race was a thing, but he tried not to pay attention to it because he's in Texas and he's in Dillon. He's in a small town. So, and he, and he one of few on the team. So, um, he was one of few on the team. So he just tried not to look too much into it. He just tried to move on. But you know, the other kids, the other black kids, they was not having that. And so he, he went to go try to talk to the coach just to get an understanding. And the coach just spazzed on him. I was like, see, uh-uh. This is where it's going left, baby. This is where it's going left. <laughs> it's going left. Like, coach, are you serious? When he turned his resignation, I was like, but Coach Taylor kept him. I was like, "Ooh, Coach Taylor, you, you, you must be walking in the love of Jesus." He's he's walking in the love of Jesus, and um, he told him that he was he was a good coach regardless of you know his indiscretions, and we all deserve a second chance because Jesus gave plenty. Jesus gave plenty of chances, and so it wasn't until you know. It wasn't until that situation where they were on their way back home after they had to cut the game off. They cut the they cut the game because it was getting out of control. So Dylan ended up winning the game by consequence. I mean, not consequence by circumstance because they were up at the time in which the game was stopped. So they were winning, and so they ended up giving them the title or whatever. And so that is the game that let them advance to the state championship. But it's just the fact that, like, um, the police really followed the bus and was like, somebody from the crowd said, smash through the first punch. No, a good dog or will smash ain't throw that first punch. They were just being racist. And so, um, that coach ended up standing up for him. Because that scene could have just all went. It could have all went higgledy piggledy after that. It could have just all went left. But the coach stood up for them. And I was like, okay. I'm watching you, Coach Mac. I'm watching you. Um, I felt like, you know, with Smash and Waverly, in terms of mental health, there was some... You got to think of the context. You got to think of the time, okay? When you're watching this, you got to think of the time. It was 2006. That was almost 20 years ago. So the vernacular and the terms that were used at the time, all the time, were not the most favorable. But, you know, they did the best they could at, for, at that time with the words that they did know and the knowledge that they did have on mental health. I think that they did a good job um, talking about um, Waverly's bipolar disorder and her depression. I think they handled that very tactfully. Um, people who I, I'm tired of. Characters I'm tired of. Jason Street. I'm sorry, Jason, but you are on the chopping block. Let me stop. <laughs> I, Jason Street. You know, and at first I had... You know what? Maybe I need to extend grace. Maybe I need to extend grace. It's another situation where maybe I need to extend grace because Jason Street was like the top football player in that area. And on the first game, it was a play where he he needed to tackle a player and he tackled the player head down and he gave himself a spinal injury. So there was a situation where his parents was overwhelmed with the medical bills. They tried to sue the school. They tried to sue the coach. Jason was paralyzed. He ended up being paralyzed waist down. He had to adjust to being in a wheelchair. He was in a, um, he was in a, not a clinic and it's not a, a home, but he was in like a rehab center where he was living and making friends with other, um, people who had went through those similar injuries. And so he got into wheelchair rugby and I was so happy for him. Cause I was like, you know, with being an athlete myself and you know, at one point in time, at, that was my whole world. Okay. The ball and to the team and I got a little practice. That was my whole world. And so that was his whole world. And so to strip him for something like that freak accident, to strip him 
from the game and he just don't have no other way of like he don't have a hobby he don't have no other muse he don't have no other way to express himself he don't know him he don't know his life without football for him to have made friends and got into wheelchair rugby, I was so happy for him. Because I was like, oh my God, he finally going to be able to get that feeling, that sensation back. And then, you know, that dream kind of got flushed down the toilet because he wanted to make the Olympic team. He wanted to make the Paralympic team. Uh, he was still playing wheelchair rugby, but he didn't make the team. So his feelings were kind of hurt about that. And then he got into coaching. And so I was just like, yes. Layla. Layla was a brat. Layla was a brat. Layla was a brat. I feel like Layla had like, ooh, it's not Layla. It's Lila. Mm. Lila had good intentions. But Lila, Lila was just in a little bit of denial. She was all in France. So all, all wherever the Nile River was at, she was there. Because she was in denial. Uh, <laughs> And I, FYI, I know the now is not in France, y'all. It's the same from the game. If you, you know, if you watch the game, and that was something Leek said. You know, it was just a thing. Okay, moving on. Um, Layla was in the now. Layla was in the now. Um, and that's all I can say. <laughs> Layla was in the now. Then her entanglement with um, Tim Rickens. Tim fell for her. Tim was in love. I just don't know. It was a lot. It was a lot going on. Oh, then let's talk about coach wife getting pregnant. I was like, oh, come. Girl, not you getting pregnant at the end of the season, sis. Friday Night Lights, y'all was wrong. We had just found out at the end of the season that she was pregnant. And then at the end of at the beginning of this, uh, season two, she had the baby. We were supposed to get some episodes to see what life was like for her. As a coach's wife during her pregnancy. We we were robbed of that. Um, I was here for Julie. Getting with Matt. Now what happened after that? Because the relationship kind of sort of didn't last. Julie, we'll discuss that when we get into season two. But for right now, I'm, I'm with you. Getting with Matt. Because she was understanding. Because Matt was going through it. Matt was going through it. Matt was supposed to be staying with his grandma that was supposed to be his sole um guardian because his father was at war in Iraq and we never found out about where Matt Mama was at. So Julie was understanding and Matt grandma was having these dementia spells. And oh my God, it hit home for me because my granddaddy just, you know, transitioned from this physical realm with dementia. And so Dealing with a, a loved one who has dementia is like I, something I never want to experience ever again. Never. I wouldn't wish that on anybody I had beef with. That I just, I would never put that, I would never wish that on nobody. Like, he and he was going to school. He was, Jason Street had got her. He was now QB1. He had to learn plays. He had to tighten up his skills. He had to work and try to work at the ice cream parlor to make money try to pay rent because i don't know what happened to grandma money uh or she or i don't know her insurance for all the care that she needed the doctor's appointments he was trying to do that i mean it was time when grandma tried to burn the house down accident because she forgot she had cut the stove on she had got missed she had wandered away like whoo when i tell you the the hard strings child Child, child, child. Um, they even had a little situation where they talked about um somebody one of the they had a new teammate. Well, he he came to Team Rican Havoc. They called him Voodoo. I don't remember his real name. He ended up transferring, but um, he even tried to give Matt like a little competition. You know what I'm saying for QB one, um. He was a um, Hurricane Katrina. Um, he had got displaced from New Orleans. And so he had his family. Well, I don't know if it was even his family. He ended up in Dillon. But he was a top rank player, you know, where he was coming from. 
And so they even had, you know, a recruiting situation going on. They had that going on. And so, um, all in all, they ended up winning state championship. That's all that matters, period, because they was able to get down with the um with the pig skin. But other than that, like, there's probably so many other things that I didn't talk about um that I could have. But just know that season one was like that. Season two, we gonna talk. Um <laughs> we gonna talk. The season one was like that, okay? I, I gotta, you know, I'm still filling out season two right now. But when I give my summation of season two, we can talk. We can talk then until I wrap it up, till I'm finished, because I'm not finished. I don't even think I'm halfway through the season, because, you know, these seasons was long. So it's going to take me a while to watch Friday Night Lights. It ain't nothing. It ain't like Swagger where you can binge watch 10 episodes in one day. It's, it's not giving that for, um, for... <laughs> For Friday Night Lights. It's going to take it's gonna take a couple weeks. But, um... Yeah, y'all. That's all I got for um, Friday Night Lights Season 1. Have you watched Friday Night Lights? Before? And if you haven't, let's rewatch together. Leave me a comment down below. We doing these sports drums. We on football right now. This is taking the place of the All-American. <laughs> this is going to take place of All-American. Uh... Because they were on the same, because Friday Lights had five seasons. Right now, currently, All America just ended up, it's end of this fifth season. So, we're going to see how this go. Let me know what y'all think. And like, comment, and subscribe. I will be back. Stay tuned because the reviews, the talks are coming. Because we ain't got no content, y'all. The rewatch game is about to be real serious. All right. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be back with more videos. Deuces.